While Super Rugby has continued to thrill and entertain, the tournament has undergone a number of format changes over the years, having come a long way since its humble beginnings. While the competition originally started as the Super 6 in 1992, it really shot to prominence in 1993, when it became the Super 10, following the inclusion of South African teams. The then Transvaal won the inaugural Super 10, beating Auckland 2017 in the final. In 1996, the Super 12 was born, as the tournament was expanded to 12 teams, five from New Zealand, four from South Africa, and three from Australia. The Blues defeated the Sharks 45-21 in the 1996 final. And while the Crusaders finished the season at the bottom of the table, they went on to dominate the competition for many years to come. The men from Christchurch went on to win the tournament five times during the 12-team era, while South African sides were starved of silverware. 2006 saw the competition expanded to 14 teams, with the Cheetahs and the Western Force from Perth added to the mix. The Bloemfontein-based side had previously formed part of the Cats outfit, along with the Lions. But with the Cats franchise no more, the Cheetahs and the Lions played as separate teams. Once again, the Crusaders won the tournament, while the Bulls were knocked out in the semis. 2007 saw the first ever All-South African final as the Sharks hosted the Bulls in Durban. The Sharks looked to have finally ended their miserable record in finals when they led at the death. But their dreams were shattered by Bulls and Springbok winger Brian Abana. The Bulls proved to be the team of the Super 14 era as they went on to win the tournament again in 2009 and 2010. The 2010 event being an historic one as it saw them defeat the Stormers in the final at Orlando Stadium in Soweto. 2011 saw another team added to the mix in the form of the Melbourne Rebels. And for the first time in the competition's history, South Africa, Australia and New Zealand had equal representation with five teams apiece in a 15-team tournament. A new format was also introduced with a conference system put in place. Whereas the previous model saw each team play each other once, the new setup saw each side play the other four teams from their own country twice and the other ten teams once each, with the season ending with a six-team final series. The 2013 season saw the Kings of South Africa enter the fray for the first time, having replaced the underperforming Lions. The Lions returned in 2014 and were a markedly improved team by the time the competition was expanded again in 2016, in what was a revolutionary era for Super Rugby. Japan and Argentina were given representation in the form of the Sun Wolves and the Yaguares, respectively, while the Kings were given a permanent place in the 18 team tournament, which once again had undergone a format change as the South African and Australasian groups were created. The Lions were the team to beat from the South African Conference, but their loss to the Jaguares in Buenos Aires meant that they finished the league phase of the competition in second place, and thus weren't guaranteed a home final. Instead, the Hurricanes had that honour and hosted the Joburg-based side in Wellington for the decider, easily winning 23. The 2017 tournament will be the last in its current format with the competition being reduced for the first time in its history next year. Two South African sides and one Australian outfit will be removed from the 2018 event, meaning New Zealand will supply five teams, South Africa and Australia for each, while the Sun Wolves and the Jaguares will take the total number of competing sides to 15. The remodeled format is set to be in place for at least three years to the end of the 2020 campaign. South Africa and Australia are yet to reveal the teams that won't make the cut. And with Super Rugby 2017 in full swing, the sides will be going all out to stake their claim to stay in the tournament next year.